Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Soshing with Sun Tue. Uh, just if you haven't been with us before, this is a show where we celebrate ordinary people that make extraordinary choices and uh, live extraordinary lives as a result. Um, we don't believe that there are any extraordinary people. We just believe that ordinary people make extraordinary choices. Um, if you haven't been with us before, please just give me a second, and we're going to start sharing this around a little bit and try and get all the shares out so that we can bring as many people in. If you are with us already, uh, drop a comment there. Let us know where you're watching from. Say hi to everybody else. That's me again. My bad. <laughs> Telling uh, everyone else to close their, their sound, and then I don't do it myself. Typical, 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 typical. Uh, <laughs> uh, today, we're joined by Sarah Kerr from Mummy's Angels in Zim. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you doing, Paul? Good. I'm still just trying to do the shares quick. Absolutely. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, almost done, almost done. How does it, how do I do it here? Sometimes I'm like a total bummer with this as well. Uh, today, we're joined by Sarah Kerr from Mummy's Angels in Zim. Hi, Where's that coming from? Hi, how are you doing? That's coming from Good, me. I'm still just trying to do the shares quick. What? I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> I was had that... to hit mute, but I think it was on a little bit of a lag, so, yeah. Oh, uh, was that you? I, I might have to share that afterwards, so that's fine. So, both of us did exactly the same thing. It's pretty yeah. normal. <laughs> um, okay, here's what I wanted to do. Um... And then how do I share it from there? There we go. This is taking longer than it should. Um, slow to join up. It's okay. Um, Almost done. Yeah, tag your mates. Let us know you're there. Bring others in. The more people that know, the more we can help. Um, yeah. I really need an assistant to do all of this while I'm while we're busy. <laughs> I think that what they need to do is make a link live before. Um, that would make sense to me. And. Um, I'd be like Joe Rogan. I need that's life goals. I need to be like Joe Rogan, where he has his assistant who brings the stuff up onto the screen and clicks on things and makes things happen for him. Yeah, that's a life goal. Podcast has like a assistant as well. Yeah. Right. We're good to go. We've got uh, Stacy Saddlefeld. Saddlefeld. Hi, oh, nice, Stacy. I know her. Shirley Cox. Hey, shells. Donna Tipler. Focus winner. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Right. They contributed to Mummy's Angels a few times. She's wonderful. Oh, cool. Um, well, where do we start? Um, tell us, first of all, <laughs> a little bit about you, who you are, where you're from. Okay. So um, I'm originally born in Zimbabwe, but to an Australian mother and a Canadian father, which meant that when I was in my late teens, I moved to Canada and then did university in Canada and Australia. So a little bit of a global citizen. Um, my mum also moved to Botswana in that time, so I've lived there. And yeah, that's the, the basics about me. Work-wise, I work in, in media. Oh, cool. Um, so unrelated to, um, I guess, Mummy's Angels, which is something that I've done in my spare time. So tell me about, so you're the founder of Mummy's Angels, correct? Yes, but um, I was inspired to do it because of my friend Rochelle. So her and I had volunteered in Botswana previously. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Zimbabwe, she began Mummy's Angels in Botswana. And uh -huh. when she told me about it, I went, wow, that's a really simple concept and a way I could help. So I decided to do the same thing in, in Zimbabwe. Oh, cool. So give us a, a bit more information what exactly Mummy's Angels is. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, we collect secondhand 
baby goods, um, as well as toiletries, which mostly aren't secondhand. And we give them to women who are in need. Now, the way we do that is the main hospital here, um, the nurses do an assessment when women come in. A lot of women come from rural areas, sometimes walking 30, 40 kilometers in labor, um, sometimes coming on a donkey cart, sometimes getting a car. Um, and some of them just really don't have much. We get women coming in with just a, a wrapper, a piece of tatengi, um, you would call it a pareo, or, and that's that's all they have. For so, those that don't know, a chitenge or a wrap, it's like a sarong that, uh, or yeah, a towel. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And so the nurses and staff at the hospital are fantastic, and they do an assessment um, of the ladies, and if they find that they're in need, they give us a call. And we come with a bag that is meant to basically take the child through the first year. So we have clothing, a uh, number of outfits for all different ages. We try to have reusable nappies, uh, reusable sanitary wear for the mum, some clothing for the mum, and basic toiletries, just such as soap, aqueous cream, um, moisturizer, just the, the sort of basics that you would need, a, a baby blanket. Uh, each bag is different because it's based on donations but that's what we try to have and a, a toy something nice as well just some sweet things if we can so when you decided to start this in zimbabwe where what was the first thing where did you actually start how did you how did you even go about yeah making the it happen in the beginning it was really again um because of rochelle so her full name is rochelle the brain or cats now that she's married um and she had had a baby before me and friends gave her all sorts of things. And she just thought, this is amazing. How would I have done this without that support? And so that's where she got the idea. And so the first bag that we did, Mummy's Angels Botswana actually sent to me, which was a very good thing because I wasn't a mum and I probably would have packed just the complete wrong thing. It's amazing um, how you have no idea, eh? I would have been like, how many nappies do they need? Like. <laughs> one or two a day <laughs> so um yeah they need a lot more than that at first <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that bag was really what guided us on on what to try and pack um like i said each bag's kind of individual because it is based on donations um but that's where we began so we went to the two hospitals here there's one main hospital and another clinic that's associated with the council and asked if we could work through them. And that's Victoria Falls you're talking about, yeah? In Victoria Falls, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're now trying to, to get some rural outreach programs happening as well, but we still mainly operate through Victoria Falls. Yeah. I've got a question for you from Donna Tipler. Sure. Uh, Sarah, wonderful work you're doing. As a vet tech, I worry regarding vaccinations. Do you have any support backup for your babies regarding this? Yeah, so the babies get vaccinated for free at the hospital. Um, it is, they need to go, come back to the hospital for routine vaccinations. So it is hard for some of the ladies, but they, and rural outreach, the nurses do also go to rural areas to do vaccinations. So um, I'm not providing vaccinations, but there is a program to do that. There's normal government mandated vaccinations, aren't exactly, there? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's part of that so, program. Yeah, and everyone gets, um, when they do give birth, they get a, a clinic card that tracks the baby's weight, um, what vaccines they've had, that kind of thing, um, you know, whether they're breastfeeding, all of those things over time. So, yeah. So when you first uh, decided that you were going to do this and you approached the hospitals, what was the what was the reception like when you went there? Were you uh, welcomed openly or was it a bit of a challenge getting in there because of being I know, I know just from my perspective on things that I've done in the past where um you know Joe soap over here just pitches up one day trying to lend a hand people are like well who who are you what yeah. you know there's there's protocols for this kind of thing that's not uh it's, exactly. you, you don't just rock up and start dishing things out so how yeah. how how are you received in the beginning initially it was tricky um I think it helped that I just continued 
to go up, show up and see who I needed to speak to. So at the hospital, there's a matron, there's a nurse in charge of maternity, um, and then there's a lot of nurses in maternity, um, as well as the pediatrics ward. Um, so initially, I think they were skeptical because I rightly so, I could have just come once and it could have been a dead end, or I think they're also just worried within the hospital um just hygiene they don't really want people to be intrusive in any way i mean the maternity ward is quite it's quite an intimate place you know people are having babies so over time i um we now have a whatsapp group with almost all of the maternity nurses on it and several of the doctors the matron um the head nurse and i think over time they've come to to, to, it's been more than a year and a half now, coming up to two years that we've been operating. And so now we have a pretty good relationship with everyone there. Um, the council clinic, they we've had a lot more resistance. They had a lot of red tape. Um, they'd say email someone, no one would get back to us. Um, so most of the um, people who go to that clinic, we actually hear about them after the fact through community members and stuff, if they are in real need. So there is some some resistance, um, yeah. So on the on, on the the funding side of things, how is this how is this organisation funded? Well, initially, there's no funding. Um, one of the things that really attracted me to it was the fact that it's sustainable. Hmm. So you're just it's the basic concept of reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, anyone who has a baby or has several babies and their kids have grown out of this stuff can help and i think for a lot of people they feel that they can't help maybe you don't have a lot of funds or um that kind of thing you just think what can i do and this is for many people something that is achievable that they can do um so now further down the line we have received donations from people we've become a registered trust mm -hmm. and we had a goal to put solar into the maternity ward um, so we have some funding set aside for that, but COVID has kind of delayed that. I see. So, uh, so for fun, you do take financial donations, not just actual. We do take financial donations now, um, now that we're registered trust. Um, and, but whenever we take financial donations, we're using that for a particular cause. So we will provide receipts of what we've purchased with that, which is okay. basically, um, yeah, basic toiletries, sometimes baby clothes if we're running low on stock, and sometimes um, formula if there's babies whose mothers have passed away. I see. Because um, the reason I'm asking that as well is that uh, I got contacted earlier by an anonymous donor that wishes to remain anonymous, and they will be donating five hundred dollars oh to God. Mummy's Angels, that and. Is a of money <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they the 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 specific um the specific uh words to me were that we we're putting the first um bit of inertia into the program today so that hopefully other people will follow suit and and throw that some is, donations down as well are, but thank you very much that is really incredible um yeah that goes so far to put it in perspective we have a deal where we can get reusable diapers and $50 gets 31 diapers, reusable ones. So that's enough diapers for six women. So, I mean, $500 will really do a lot. There um, we go. Solar, solar project we were talking about, if we put some towards that, it, you, we might be able to keep ba um, premature babies on um, what are the machines called, called PREMS. Incubator. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Amazing. Yeah, great. Eh? Um, we've got another Donna Tipler saying, Sarah, what is your backup or should I rather say go to if a mom is sadly lost during birth and now you have a bubs? Paul, your anonymous donor could help this. Um, okay, so usually what happens in Zimbabwe is families are very close and most people have an extended family. So we have had a number of cases where the mom has passed away. Um, 
And what has happened in the vast majority of these is they've gone to the grand, the baby has gone to the grandparents. Um, in that circumstance, we do provide formula and we commit to providing formula for at least the first year. So we only do that when, um, when necessary, when either prescribed by a doctor if the, the mother cannot breastfeed or in most instances when the mother's passed away. Um, so there's, we actually haven't had a case yet where there's been no one who can look after the baby. Um, they've gone to family members and yeah that's one of the really incredible things about Zimbabwe and the sort of social structure here which I'm sure Paul you've seen mm, that is quite it's crazy lots of aunties uncles and grannies and grandpas to yeah. to adopt and take over that I mean yeah. yeah that's it's it is incredible especially village life village life in Zimbabwe is completely different to city life it's very 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 family orientated and inclusive and uh yeah, everybody yeah. everybody pitches in and helps and helps everybody else. It's it's an amazing, amazing culture. Yeah. We have had um some family headed households um that we've assisted as well. We had an eleven year old girl come in with her baby sister on her back and then um it was actually the pediatric ward that contacted us because they were malnourished. Um but for for the little babies we haven't had anyone who hasn't had a family member to take them, which is a good thing because the social welfare system here is um it's a bit yeah. non-existent yeah <laughs> lacking <laughs> yeah lacking is a good good yeah. good way to put it yeah. um shirley cox uh said do you have offhand the number of mothers babies you as an organization have assisted to date so people can understand just how much of an impact you have made to women and newborns here i actually have to do some math because i know how many we help on average per month so <laughs> but I know that's really bad. I should have um, got organized. So I think right now we'd be looking at probably around 240 moms that we've assisted. And that's just in a year and a half, eh? A bit more than that coming up to, to two. So yeah, wow. we t we're normally doing per week two to three mums a week wow yeah just just depending so um i got contacted today uh there's twins that have just been born twin girls that i'll be assisting tomorrow and then also got contacted through um actually a, a man called frederick mafira i think you might have you might know of his son his, his son um is a very good blade runner he has a disability and his father's okay. very involved in the disabled community here. I and see. so he's been help, helping us identify people in need as well. So there's also a three month old with a disabled mum. And they're, they're really just in need of clothing, baby blankets, that kind of thing. So that's three people to help tomorrow. So um, Nicola, but months. this is such a beautifully humane thing to do. Please, could you provide details for us who wish to get in touch with you? I think the Facebook page, uh, uh, Sarah Gardner has been kind enough to already drop the Facebook page in the comments. Okay, so the face Facebook page has gone in already. So you can contact Sarah through that. I can also, um, uh, Paul, where can I comment this? Um, I'll put up our email address. Okay. If you just chuck it in the comments on the, on the right, I think. Great. And then I can I can also put up my phone number. And I am lucky enough now uh, to – sorry, it's not letting me comment there. I can comment in the private chat, and I might have to get you to – Oh, that's fine. – forward that on. Um, so I'll put my phone number. I do have WhatsApp. And then I'm lucky enough to have – we have <laughs> I've just seen in the private chat your comment says your hair looks fine. <laughs> when we initially logged on, I watched Paula fix his hair for a while. So. <laughs> without, without me knowing that she was there. It was a good, good long time. <laughs> okay, so I've got it. I've put your... your yeah, uh, I can also put the number um, one of the ladies on our... Board of Trustees is Shan O'Fee, so I can also give her number, or there's also Megan Conn's number. But one of the things that's 
things that's been incredible is the number of people who've come forward to help. I'm going to just bring this up on the screen for the YouTube viewers later. So this is uh, Sarah's number. <laughs> all the all the weirdos out there that want to contact Sarah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <worries. laughs> Um, yeah, but in seriousness, this is how you can get hold of Sarah for uh, Mummy's Angels, and then email address is yeah. there as well. Yeah. Um, Justine, to nice to see you. Justine there. Hi, Hi Justine. Just. She says uh, you're an angel, Sarah. Oh, that's very sweet, but I'm, I'm really not. Um, yeah, like I said, it's been an incredible coming together of community and different people. So almost every bag there's things that have come from a, a huge amount of people and it's really not just me. So I wanted to ask you, um, do you have a physical premises you operate out of or? We now have a storage room at the hospital. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yeah. So that um, has really helped the spare room in my house for a while was pretty chaotic. Um, and the storage room at the hospital has helped massively. And we've also had a few people who've donated shelving and things like that to that um, facility. So, yeah, we, we have that now, which is massive. So we do bag packs there. And it also means that when I get a call and I need to make a donation, I can always just pop into that room, get it and deliver it to the moms at the hospital. Okay. And then otherwise, on this whole thing, are you just using um, your own steam to go there and back? and? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so that's where I've been lucky in the past probably six months to mm -hmm. really get some help with this. Um, Shano Fee and Megan Con have been incredible with helping to pack bags, deliver bags, uh, help with social media, collect donations and things like that. And we also have um, some of the nurses are on our board of trustees. They've also kindly given their time and expertise uh, to us. So, yeah. What about that's... general running expenses? There's got to be. Yeah, I haven't taken anything for that. Uh, it's really just fuel um, and I guess time, but I'm happy to be donating that. I mean, when I started this, it was because I wanted to help and mm. it has been very rewarding. Um, being able to assist. I've had a few people say to me, geez, I don't know how you can do it. Um, but I have to say to me, I don't know how I could know that this need was there and do nothing. Like that was harder for me. So when Rochelle came up with this idea and there was a way I could help, it was actually just really nice to have a way to help. For sure. Um, there's a few more comments. Wow. Um, First one is from Donna again. So, uh, Sarah, what is your what is on your wish list? A tough one, I know. No, oh, that's that's a great um, question. Um, first, first of all, uh, I think the biggest thing someone can give secondhand if they have it is reusable nappies. If anyone is using modern cloth nappies and your kids are done with them, that is just such a sustainable, amazing thing for a woman in a rural area to receive or for a family, you know, for the dad, for the baby. Um, so nappies, any old um, gently used baby clothes, um, they don't have to be pristine. It's nice for people to have an outfit that they can have the kid in at home and they can muck around in. So don't feel like, you know, what you have isn't good enough. Um, yeah, those those would be high on high on the wish list mm. uh, of our, our top priorities. Um, even bags that people can pack in. So if you have just a, an old bag that we can pack the goods in to give to the mums, those are great. Sometimes people have their old baby bag, the backpack, anything like that. And really nice treats for mums can be something as simple as a, a dressing robe or something like that. So. If anyone wants to go and buy new, that is very appreciated. But even having a little drive at a, a local preschool or daycare center, asking everyone to bring in one old item of clothing, things like that can really make a huge impact. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great ways to do things is to uh, do some initiatives at, uh, at some of the schools, I reckon. 
Yeah. Um, I know when I was growing up at our schools, we did a lot of uh, fundraising type of situations, not fundraising, but uh, hamper, what we say, hamper generating. Uh, we yeah. had a big basket outside our hall where you could drop things. Absolutely. Old toys, like yeah. every time you have a bag and there's a toy or sometimes someone's given like a cute little headband or a hat and you just see the mom's face like light up when there's something new and nice or maybe not even new but just like a toy is not a necessity but it, it brings such joy when you give it so yeah um prince brooklyn mcwilliams hi sarah i don't i didn't know of this charity i love what you're doing god bless you and everyone involved i hope one day i'll be able to donate thank you prince and donna this is why i love zimbo it's shucks we struggle every day but then we have people like you sarah who go over and beyond to help our people and then we have our special Paul. Special is right. If it's as true for you and you're also networking, I I would have had no idea of this trust. Uh, thanks, Donna. Um, I have to say being um, online was a little out of my comfort zone. So thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Tafadzwa. Mangezi, just want to know if you assist a mother at birth, do you continue to provide for babies till they are at a better stage, say like two years, or is it just provision at birth? So like I said, our bags will provide enough clothing at least for the first year, um, as well as bedding um, and toiletries. Toiletries might not last the, the first year, dependent on what we have, but we do also keep a record of all of the mothers and their details. If we have clothing for above a year old, we, we include that. And when we know that there's desperate cases, we try to follow up and provide more at a later stage. So, um, yeah, there's been cases like we had another set of twins recently who, who were both under two kilograms when they were discharged, uh, 1.7 kilograms. Um, that mom was living in a very... Uh, basically just had plastic um, bin bags as a roof of her sort of one meter by one meter shelter up against someone's like a lean to up against someone's wall. Um, so we did, have done a number of follow up packages with her. Um, we've worked with the Jafuta Foundation to provide um, food hampers and um, stuff like that for her, as well as just doing some community outreach. So we managed to get a breast pump, which for the prem babies that don't yet have the suck reflex like that breast pump the lady who gave it i always wondered if she realized she may she may have literally saved their lives because mm. um hand expressing in that it's okay but it's just a massive thing if you're a mom of two twins who can't feed themselves so um yeah we do follow up where we can sometimes the women do not have contact details a lot of ladies from rural areas um give us their well point as their contact details so they say the nearest borehole number um and we can try following up with their chief and and stuff but it can be very hard to get back in touch sometimes what sort of uh just out of my curiosity what sort of villages are you are you mostly seeing people from <sighs> it's do you know it's, there's lots of jambezi um there's further afield there's a lot of places that um, I could scroll back down the Facebook page, but that I've honestly never heard of. Oh, I often right. say, like, where exactly is that? <laughs> um, mm. We do actually get a fair few um, women who don't speak in the Bele or Shona um, in the hospital. Um, so we've got to find another patient or a nurse who speaks Tonga or something else. I always think it's quite amazing to go into a hospital and give birth and not be able to understand any of the nurses or doctors. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so let's scroll back down and see where some of the last donations have been from. Um, yeah, we've got from Chiedza Titch. I have lots of baby clothes, which I'm going to look at donating from the UK. This is a fantastic, this is fantastic because most clothes here just end up in landfills, which is such a shame, such an amazing cause. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. That's, that's exactly. Yeah, that would be incredible. Yeah, particularly um, here, people don't realize, but we do actually have quite a cold winter um, when you don't have um, any central heating or anything like that. So it's just, you know, warm clothes in the wintertime makes such a difference. Absolutely. 
Yeah, you're right about that. People don't understand how bitter a winter in Zimbabwe can be because it's not none 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 of our houses are designed for it. Our, des- our houses are designed to be colder inside than outside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is fantastic. Do you mind doing an article on this? I'm guessing uh, Mashuru is a journalist of some sort. Who's my... Ma- uh, yeah, no. Maybe, yeah. If you'd like to do, an, if you'd like to interview us, I'm happy to have an article on this. Any publicity, sharing, that kind of thing is wonderful. So, um, if Mashudu, you would like to interview us, then that would be great. And uh, from Nolene Gaze, Gaza, Giza, well done, yeah. Sarah. If I collect stuff in Cape Town, how could I get it to you? Okay, so we have um, a runner, which is probably a very African. Thing at the moment, but basically someone who does cross-border transport, Julius, who's actually agreed to bring us donations um, free of charge every six weeks from South Africa. So if you're able to get that to Joburg, I can give you an address where um, we can um, collect donations, and then he will bring that through periodically. So that would be amazing, Nolene, if you're able to do that. Um, we will definitely work to try find a way to get it here. So um, if anyone does want to mail stuff, I can also give that address. Um, we cannot pay postage. We don't have the funds to do that, but we don't get taxed as a trust. So at least, we, um, yeah, we collect it. We won't be getting taxed on any donations. Wonderful. Um, I just lost what I was going to say. I've forgotten. <laughs> just went out my head um oh the burning question that uh, that's that you got to ask everybody in this time at the moment is how has covid affected this whole situation yeah it's we it's affected it terribly i would say um victoria falls in particular is very tourism based and so we have a really high unemployment right now but we have also just started to see the first cases of you know um pregnancies that it, that with women are, teenagers are giving birth prematurely and we think that's a result of being out of school um we're coming up to seven eight months of um, teens being out of school uh. so we expect that to rise um a third of the mums that we help are teenagers so we see quite a lot of even young teens 14 year olds um yeah so it's definitely having an impact and it's a reason that we have been trying to be more proactive about collecting donations because we can see the need is just increasing. So you're saying in the lockdown and the lack of going to school, et cetera, is increasing pregnancies? Yes, we think so. Yeah, that is, that's an anecdotal. I have not conducted a, a full scientific study, uh, <laughs> but anecdotally we're seeing more teen, teen moms and we think that's just beginning. Um, the nurses have said that they're seeing more teenagers coming in in different stages of pregnancy who haven't yet given birth. So mm. we're expecting more more teenage moms. Yeah. And the the actual COVID has it have you has it affected any of the moms directly from a point of view of actually contracting it? Do you deal with any moms who are suffering from COVID? We haven't seen any. Um, the hospital was at a stage we weren't really able to go there but they're following really good protocols i can't praise the staff um at victoria falls hospital enough this the doctors and nurses are incredible they work very very hard to ensure their their patients are well cared for and so they have quite strict protocols with sanitation hygiene masks all of that at, at the hospital right now i'm not sure if there's enough testing that we would know Mm. people had had it to be honest if they were severely symptomatic yes they would be tested um but i think in zimbabwe a lot of the time if people had mild flu symptoms if they were in among the lucky ones that might not get um picked up Mm. so yeah but we haven't really seen uh any outward signs of of covid impacting mothers yeah Okay, so just to do to, to reiterate for those that uh, just joined us, um, 
We're talking to Sarah Kerr today about um, Mummy's Angels in Zimbabwe, which is a charity organization that helps uh, new mums uh, with uh, hampers to get them started, um, especially low-income mums who don't have, have much to, to get going. <laughs> um, this, uh, this show is Searching with Suntwe. We do this every Wednesday. I have um, a different guest every week. So if you've enjoyed today and uh, you want to see more shows like this, Please join us every Wednesday at the same time. Different guests, different topics. We explore all sorts of different things and different perspectives. Um, we will be changing the time a little bit as uh, we go into daylight savings time. But um, yeah, for now, this is it. And uh, please do get involved with the conversation. Drop your comments and uh, and uh, let us know what your thoughts are. Ask your questions and um, we will endeavor to answer them as much as possible. I see Donna's given us another comment here. Sarah, what are your thoughts on getting somebody up to the falls to have a day of education regarding contraception? Would you be able to get together a big enough group of girls, maybe schools? Um, it's something I could definitely look into. It would require talking to the schools. And since the schools, a lot of them are still not in session, um, <clears throat> I think we definitely have to look at at how to do it in today's era. I think currently you're only allowed to have gatherings of 50 uh, socially distanced, which would obviously impose a limit on, on a number at any one time. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible. It would just mean that we've got to work within the, the current restrictions. Um, yeah, so it would be a matter of probably going through a high school. There's a few in the area. And a lot of the, the heads and stuff are great. And then seeing how we can contact um, kids of a certain age and how to how to reach them. One of the, the main problems at the moment um, with contraceptives, I'd say, is if financially it can be very hard for women to get the pill. Um, it's not it, – it's, it's hard to overstate. Um, there are people who are struggling to feed themselves – so although it can seem crazy, like the pill seems like such a necessity, it can be very hard to access. Mm, absolutely. Donna's dropped her email address in the comments there for you to be in contact. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I will go through all the, all the comments afterwards. I'm just, um, Paul, I'm sending you the address in Joburg and the address in Victoria Falls if anyone wants to get anything um, to Joburg where um, it's a physical address in Joburg you can drop it off there and we can look at bringing it up to Vic Falls and then uh, in Vic Falls that's just a mailing address if anyone wants to mail anything okay the Vic Falls one is done yep sorry I'm just finding the other one to copy and paste because it's not on the um, top of my head I'm afraid Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second, Paul. Feel free to keep chatting if you want to ask me anything. <laughs> um, so tell us what your goals are with Mummy's Angels. Where would you like to take it from here? Um, yeah, so we've got a couple um, goals. One of the things we'd love to do is to do more rural outreach. And we do have a, a few people that we've... Um, Sorry, I've got that address for you. Um, we have worked with Green Line Africa Trust to do some deliveries to rural areas, as well as a group of local pastors. Um, but we'd actually like to get out with Green Line Africa and go and see a lot of the more rural clinics and get some bags in stock in those clinics. So it's a matter of um, making sure there's someone who can deliver those bags, as well as we want to ensure that one of the advantages so far with being so small is we really know that these goods are going to where they're needed and that nothing's getting pilfered um, and that it's transparent. Like on the Facebook page, generally, if we make a donation, if they're not underage and they're able to consent and they're happy for us to put it up there, we put it up. So mm. people can often see they donated a teddy and a few weeks later they might see it going to someone. Um, so that transparency is really important for us. We don't want to, uh, yeah, get too big and not be able to do that. So that's the first one, rural outreach. 
And the second one that we were trying to do pre-COVID was to put solar into the maternity ward. And that would really be for two reasons. It's to run the incubators for the premature babies um, who currently they do kangaroo care with the mums in case because we have frequent power cuts and they can't risk the power going off and a baby being in an incubator and also to provide lights uh, in the theater. Um, so we have had cases last year, we had really frequent power cuts and the doctors were often doing C-sections by the light of the nurse's cell phones. So uh, yeah. That is that, hectic. Yeah. Um, I've, watched, I've watched two C-sections and that's not a joke of an operation. Yeah, yeah. so. To do it by um, a cell phone light is next level. I must say um, the doctors are just incredible. And the, and the nurses where they just, they really give their all. Um, but so that's our other goal. And we do have um, funds saved to that. Blessing Munyanyiwa donated um, a, a large portion of funds. I uh, should have had all my numbers in front of me. And I don't, <laughs> but I could bring it up. Um, and, and then we also had a, a few other donations. Um, plus we've now got this 500. So that's still something that's on our radar. It's just that with COVID, we're trying to prioritize, um, should we put all of that funds to the solar? Is that still the priority? We're seeing less puts, um, power cuts right now. And so we have also, you know, had some discussions with the board saying, is that the best place to put that money? Um, but that was the, the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, Mashudu says, uh, thanks for accepting our request for a newspaper interview. Our maternal health reporter will contact you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Wow. So guys, uh, we've got roughly 20 minutes plus minus left. So if you've got any questions or any comments, please drop them now because we're going to start winding things down and, uh, you know, I don't like to take it on too long. So uh, to keep you guys happy, just put all your questions in now. We'll try and uh, try and uh, get get around to all the ones that that come through. If you don't have any more, we'll start to wind it down. Um, I'm going to ask a couple of fun-ish questions directly to Sarah while we're waiting for any more of yours. They won't be anything too serious and might be a little bit unrelated. But um, uh, my question that I ask. Uh, Everyone, every week is always related to the fact that this is called Soshing with Suntwe, Suntwe being my nickname, which means hyena, and uh, was given to me on the river because apparently I have a lot of hyena-like traits, one of them probably being a face only a mother can love. But um, yeah, so Sarah, what uh, what animal do you identify yourself as? What do you, Which one do you relate to the most, do you think? I don't know. I actually really like hyenas, but... Um... I do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they traits more. <laughs> I, I don't know. I love the, I love a lot of the little things. Bush babies, chameleons. Um, no one loves chameleons like Graham loves chameleons though. Yeah, my husband is obsessed with chameleons. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's such a tough one. I'm, I really am a nature lover. Um, my mom's a safari guide. I just grew up in the bush. So they're all yeah. good and wonderful. I love them all. You, you can pick one for me, Paul. Is there something I... <laughs> I, I, I no, that's something that has to come from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I've really um, identified with. Do I'm you sure. have a... I sorry? Say giraffe. Giraffe. I was going to say giraffe, actually, to be honest. You know, it's a cop-out. It's just what everyone says if you're tall. No, but it's got nothing to do with your tall, your height, your tallness. Um, it's more like because of uh, sort of the way a giraffe carries itself, I think. It's quite elegant. My loping gait. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, do you have a specific philosophy you try to live by? Um, probably just to be grateful, really. Um, I think I'm fairly resilient and I think a lot of that is just to do with being grateful for what I, what I have, trying to be present in the moment. Yeah, that's it. Simple, I guess. 
Cool. So uh, Carl says, uh, Sarah is one of my favorite creatives in Victoria Falls. Carl is a past past guest of ours on the show and uh, a comedian, chef, entrepreneur, all-round interesting character. If you'd asked him, I'm sure. What's that? I'm sure Carl had jokes when you when you asked him his his animal and all of that. <laughs> I don't think I asked Carl to be honest. Missed opportunity. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity. Carl, if you're listening, put down in the comments what animal you think you you identify as, mate. And uh, Shelly Cox, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you to you and the team alongside you for helping so many mothers and young lives here. Yeah. Paul, thanks for profiling the amazing work they're doing. Oh, thank you, Shelly. And Shelly has donated. Um, yeah, she's a new mum herself. So thanks, Shells. Um, and I always, I'm, I must just reiterate that it's, it's not just me. Um, from the nurses who are consistently telling us about people to Shan and Megan and Hannah Brightman has helped as well. Yeah, so a lot of people have really helped. So many people have donated. I cannot possibly name them all. They're, they're, they're baby things. Donna says, Don's is focused after a long day, but to have every wish that I can help as much as I can. Really, really proud of what you do, Sarah. And I'll say again, thank you, Paul, for making us aware of this awesome project. Thanks, thank Donna. Uh, yeah. Donna, seeing your name there every week on the show is always uh, very encouraging, and I really appreciate the support as well. So thank you for always uh, always showing up when when we need you. Uh, Shelly Cox reckons you're a bat fox. <laughs> <laughs> it, um carl yeah. reckons uh i'm a monkey Nube, which makes sense and he says uh monkeys are disruptors of the peace <laughs> i can see that disruptors are always good fuck the trends S- sarah is saying can you see the comments in the watch parties from shan some something people often ask is what is the average cost of ours of a hamper for a mother thank you we don't see any of the comments from the watch parties we only see the comments that are directly on the original post so um, thank you for pulling that up there, Sarah. Um, yeah, I would say a hamper cost would, if, uh, depends, do I cost the donated items, essentially? So generally, we're just paying for toiletries, in which case um, a lot of people donate the, the toiletries. I would say if we were to get it all brand new, oh, it's, it's a hard one. Um maybe 60 to a hundred dollars oh wow um, it's hard it's all of the clothing um we do three to four outfits for each age so zero to three months three to six months six to nine nine to twelve um swaddles blankets uh yeah the reusable nappies um reusable sanitary wear clothing for mum yeah it all really adds up a toy um, I can actually maybe do a costing and try and get that down for you. Just require me uh, going to a few different places. But that's a great question, Chan, and I wish I had the answer. I was worried I wouldn't have the answers. Uh, Shelly says, uh, Sarah also offers amazing emotional support to new mothers outside of mom- of Mommy's Angels. And uh, she adds, uh, Sarah was so kind and welcoming to me when I came to work in Vic Falls, but I sadly had to leave. We'll definitely spread the word for you. May know me as Chi. Hi, Chi. Yeah, I do know you as Chi. (laughs) Um, Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Right, guys. um, I think we're going to wrap it there. Um, Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today and uh, chatting to me about this wonderful initiative. It's an amazing cause, and I'm wishing you all the best of luck and all the success in the future with it, and I'm sure everybody else is too. Um, I will get in touch with you once that donor has worked out how and when and why, and uh, I'll try and see how we can get that directly to you. Truly incredible. I tr- I'll try not to. I don't really want to be in the middle of it, so I'll see if they're willing to just get directly in touch. We'll see. Perfect. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Paul, and thank you for everyone. I mean, this has been incredible seeing people say that they would like to send some clothing for the UK. 
that donation of 500 is just amazing and will make such a difference. So there's one more comment here. Uh, do you have contacts in each city in Zim that we can refer people to? We don't have an each city of Zim in Zim, but we do have in Harare. Um, I'm sure if we need to in Bulawayo, I can find a donation drop-off point because people are often going back and forth from Big Falls to Bulawayo. And if you have a specific um, other location, please just let us know. Often social media is incredible like this. We can put a call out and someone will, will often come through and assist. Um, so Bulawayo and Harare, we can definitely make a plan if anyone is wanting to donate. Yeah. Cool. Thank you again. And thank you. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Just to remind everybody, we do this every Wednesday, different guests, same time, different topics. If you uh, know anyone who you think I should have on the show, get them in touch with me. If you think you should be on the show, get in touch with me. I'm, I'm more than happy to chat to anyone from all different walks of life because I'd like to explore as many perspectives and as many topics as possible because this is not only for you guys out there, this is also educational and growth for me too. So I really enjoy talking to as many different people as I can and learning and uh, uh, enhancing and uh, expanding my horizons as I go. So thank you all for joining us again and good night. Good night.